Hey everybody, uh, Jeremy here. It's Friday night, and we're gonna draw some art. It's gonna be, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be awesome. Um, no announcements. I'm just gonna hop right into it. Uh, I don't know how long this one's gonna take. So, uh, what we're working on tonight is another in my dog series. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to do a Siberian Husky tonight. And let me switch to the paper. So as you can see by the paper, I'm going to try to do um, another one of those uh, white on black paper uh, drawings. Uh, I find those are a lot of fun. And um, yeah, I'm just going to hop right into it. Uh, I don't know how long this is going to take because uh, sometimes these uh, these white on black pictures go pretty quick. So, you know, if it, if it takes an hour, that's cool. If it doesn't take an hour, well, hey, you guys get your Friday night off. Hey Angela, how's it going? Uh, hey Trusted, how's um, how's your guys' Friday tonight? You guys having a good time? All right, so I'm just gonna drop uh, hop right in. So the other day I was um, I, I would, let's see, what was it? Wednesday, Wednesday. Hey hey yeah. hey, okay Larry, how's it going? <laughs> um, the uh, the other day uh, I was doing a charcoal picture uh, in black and white where the uh, black was on white paper. This is the act uh, the opposite of that. So this is uh, white on black paper. But I'm going to use some of the same techniques. So uh, in the last uh, stream that I did, I introduced the idea of using like you know like uh, powdered charcoal. Uh, I'm going to do the same with this white powdered um, charcoal. So again, the, w the way that works is I sharpen my pencils uh, by using sandpaper. So in this case, I'm using a uh, like a white uh, pastel, um, basically white charcoal. And I sharpen it on the sandpaper and I get all this extra gunk. And instead of throwing it away, I just kind of save it. So I dump it into like the bowl. And the reason why I do that is because you can buy like powdered charcoal if you wanted to, like if you wanted to skip that step. But it's like... It's expensive and it's dumb because like uh, you end up getting all that kind of soot anyway when you go to sharpen your pencils. So anyway, I've collected a little bit. Um, there's a reason why I'm I'm uh, doing this. Uh, eh, where'd my brush go? Uh, there's a reason why I'm I'm doing this um, kind of powdered charcoal. It's because this is a, a Siberian Husky. There's parts of its face that are white and there's parts of its face that are black. So obviously the black on black is going to get drowned out, but I'm uh, some of the areas I kind of want to reinforce, like behind the ears, for example, I kind of want to reinforce um, the edges there. So I'm going to take this uh, white charcoal and I'm, I'm going to kind of like dump it on the paper just to kind of uh, get a little bit of a gray in there that I can like contrast those white, uh, those black ears against. I have no idea how this is going to go. This is, um, this will be fun. I, I haven't done a Siberian Husky before. I think this is probably the first time I've ever drawn one. But I just want to get a little bit of, um, like a little bit of a gray back there so it's not all black. I think this is kind of cool. Um, I also just wanted to see how this works on black paper. I've done a bunch of the charcoal pictures like this, uh, but I haven't done the white charcoal like this, uh, where I'm just dropping powder on it that I can remember. Let's see how that goes. Yeah, so it kind of creates a little bit of a, like a gray, which I, I think will work. Because just like the back of his head and his ears are going to be like totally black. And if I don't like this, I can always lift it up with an eraser. But just kind of wanted to make it not stark black, you know. So I'm kind of like just jumping right into it tonight. Uh, sorry for no preamble and stuff. I don't have any announcements. Um, this has been a pretty busy week. Um, but nothing new on the channel. Just cranking out art, having fun. Hopefully you guys are having fun as well. <laughs> now, it doesn't create as much of an effect as it does on the white paper. Like if you use black charcoal on white paper and did this, it really, really creates this kind of um, mid-tone. Here, it just is kind of creating like a little bit of a smudge. So, it's okay. I'm going to kind of like swirl my brush around actually because I don't want it to be just a bunch of 
black lines. And again, I might just like lift this up with an eraser if I'm not happy with it. I just wanted to see what effect it does. Like if this was like pink or something, it might show up better, but it does kind of create this soft kind of like cloud, which I think is cool, you know. Siberian Huskies look a lot like, um, ooh, that sounds like fun, Trusted. Lucky for me, it's raining out, so I, I might not have to mow the lawn this weekend, which would be cool. Let's think about what I might want to do this weekend. I've got a lot of work I've got to catch up on, so I'm probably not going to have any fun. All right, so now I'm going to jump in and kind of like start, you know, you know the process, kind of figuring out where things are going to be. So the Husky's head is kind of, I don't want to draw it to fill up the entire page. Um, but the reference photo I've got, it does kind of fill up the entire page. Um, so I'm going to try to like, not do that. So this, this is his nose. And I kind of like that angle there. And then his nose kind of comes up. A little bit of an eye there. He's got his nostril comes back around and it kind of goes up into his neck. So I'm leaving a lot of space up here because I'm not really sure how tall his ears are. But I will have to, so I think the angle here is actually a little bit more down. I like drawing with a uh, white on black paper because it kind of makes me feel like I'm drawing on a chalkboard. Like, I think it would be kind of cool to actually go back to school and draw really cool pictures on the chalkboard. Like I never did that when I was a kid. And now I feel like, I feel like with the practice and stuff, I built the skill set to where I could do that. Now I kind of regret it. I'd like to go back to school and draw on the chalkboard. I don't even know, like do kids have chalkboards in school anymore? Or is it all digital or like, what's the deal there? I don't even know. So I feel like I want this kind of feel like I want it to be moved over, but I like this kind of like two thirds thick going on here. Not exactly two thirds, but close to it. So down below his neck is going to be in shadow. I think I'm just gonna, I'm still getting used to the techniques of drawing white on black. So I'm just gonna fill in some of this, kind of let me know where I want that nose to be. And then use some of the same techniques I use on the other charcoal pictures where I can just lift up places that I don't really want. Besides yard work, you guys got any plans for the weekend? I think I might go see a movie. Anything good in the theaters? Siberian Huskies are so cool. I wish I had one. They're so wolf-like. So they do have a lot of different patterns to their face. This one has like a lot of white in this face. Um, which I will try to capture. Oh, so the eyes, kind of make sure that I get the eyes lined up come across like that and then I want to vary my pencil stroke because here it kind of comes across and this kind of disappeared off the page a bit but right now I'm just trying to kind of get a feel for where things are on the page. Um, I know that that eye is going to be over there. I kind of feel like this eye is going to be basically the same level. He's got some black marks beneath his, his, um, his eye, which I'll have to come back and erase.
Yeah, sorry I didn't do a live stream last week. It was a buddy of mine's birthday, and he was doing a stream, and he asked me if I wanted to come on. I could have probably done both, but I didn't know what his schedule was and when he might want me to be on his live stream. So I didn't, didn't really think it through well enough to actually schedule it. I should have done one earlier. Because I am kind of committed to this whole uh, Friday thing. Like, it, it, I may have time during the week to do live streams, but I really want to commit to the uh, Friday live streams just because I know I can make time for that. Because if I'm behind on something or whatever, I can just I can just stay up the night and finish that up. Because it's Saturday, and nobody's expecting you to do anything on a Saturday. I kind of like that about weekends. Um, unless you have like a honeydew list of chores or whatever. As a freelancer, um, I do freelance web design in addition to like drawing pictures. Um, as a freelancer, I don't have a typical work week, but I really like those weekends because everybody else does, right? So they have their typical work week and they think that my typical work week is the same. But the truth is I use... I use the weekend to catch up on things I didn't finish during the week. So, weekends are relaxing to me, but in a different way than most people. So, we already got this kind of nose going here, and I, I kind of like the proportions. Um, I don't think I've screwed anything up yet. Give it time. I'll screw something up. <laughs> so, this is kind of light through here. And then it, it is so weird, but I'm getting used to it. I really like drawing on this black paper. So I've been doing more of it and I'm kind of getting used to this drawing in reverse that, that is involved in this. So I keep having to look up over my microphone because his nose is kind of down beneath it. So I'm just kind of doing some cross hatching to get things down here and then I'll kind of blend it out. The thing about um, working on this dark paper is, you know, if I was doing the black charcoal, you would start seeing some significantly dark areas by now, but because um, this white is not as opaque as the black or I, I don't know, I don't know what the deal is to be honest, but you have to put a lot more layers down of white than you do with the black. But it's such a cool effect. It's it's totally worth it. And I, I mentioned last week, well, not last week, uh, last stream, which was actually just, just Wednesday. <laughs> it seemed like it was a week ago. Um, when I go looking for a reference picture, uh, this one is off of Unsplash, which is a great resource. Like if, uh, if you're looking for pictures to draw, Unsplash is a great source. Um, it's, it's free images that people upload just because they like uh, photography. So they upload them. You're free to use them however you want. They, you know, there's no copy. Well, you know, you should probably credit them, but they, they don't even require that. I don't think. I don't know. You'd have to read the fine print. Um, but they are free to use. So I, I often go looking there for... Uh, pictures and in this case I was lucky enough to find a nice pretty uh, Siberian Husky to draw. So that's where the source is for this image. Um, but I also go looking for like really high contrast pictures. That's that's what I mentioned on Wednesday. Because um, I, I think it creates the most, most depth when you're doing like uh, this is a, a white pastel pencil but you could be using colored pencils here. Um, you could be using white charcoal, which is basically pastel too. It's just a chalk. I don't know what the actual difference is between white pastel and white charcoal, but they're basically functionally the same. But even when doing the uh, charcoal pictures, um, if you can find a nice high contrast picture, you're going to get a lot of depth let me check and make sure my eyes are lined up. I, I'm always screwing up eyes where I don't line them up correctly. So I, 
I'm paranoid about that. You'll see me double check it several times. Measure twice, cut once, right? Anywho. Um, so if you can find, especially like when doing pencil pictures, whether it's colored pencils or um, graphite or charcoal, or in my case, white uh, pastel, if you can find a nice high contrast picture, you're saving yourself a load of trouble. I could do this in colored pencil, but I really like blending things out. Um, like I can just come in here and smudge this if I want to. And you could do that kind of with colored pencils, but it's a lot more work. You have to draw each individual like line and then, you know, you can burnish it or you can use like solvent this you just kind of rub it in like this particular paper this uh white charcoal doesn't stick very well to it anyway so like i could literally just i could erase this entire picture and leave no trace that's how little it actually sticks to the paper but it's a lot better than what i've been using in the past like before i got this paper i was using like construction paper which is too smooth this at least has like a little bit of tooth to it um, it actually says that it's good for charcoal. I don't know. Or it actually says it's good for pastel too. And I, I, I guess, but there's really not like a lot of tooth there and it doesn't really stick to the page, but it works. It works for what I do, which is draw a picture and then I'll apply fix it to it if I like it. And that helps preserve it and keep it from being smudged. And you see, I'm just kind of scribbling over the same areas um, several times. And that's just so that I can kind of get an idea of the shapes uh, in the face. Um, you know, kind of like the bone structure and the anatomy that's underlying all this fur. Um, but there's other ways you could do that, too. So, like, I could come in, like... I don't feel like this is going to take forever to do, but if I was concerned about time, I could come in with like, you know, like a white charcoal stick and uh, make short work of it actually. But I don't want to do that because I, I still don't know where everything is. So I'm using this pencil to kind of like set up some guides. Now I know that there's like a lot of little white short, her, her, short hairs up in here. I'm not going to mess with those yet because I'm not really sure. I'm happy with the size of his face. I think I am. I, I think I think I would rather him be pushed over just a little bit so that I can get some more space over here to like bring this this fur out. But I'm not gonna beat myself up over that. Cause he's got that like you know how wolves are, right? Big fuzzy dogs. They got all this fur that comes off to the side. And all of that comes down. Down in here somewhere is his mouth, but I'll worry about that later. Just want, I just want his basic head at this point. And when I'm drawing in um, white charcoal or pastel or something like that, and I'm doing fur, I try to follow the uh, flow of the fur. Like oftentimes I'll just scribble to add shadow or highlights or something like that. But with fur especially, you kind of want to follow, you know, the, the brush of the fur. Cause it saves you some trouble. Like between these lines, you can say that those are like, um, you know, like shadows and stuff or like darker fur or something like that. But you couldn't do that if it was all just like circles and scribbles and stuff. Yeah, I mean, it goes pretty quick on, um, cause you're only dealing with two colors, right? So it's not like you're drawing every single individual shade of color in the, um, in the fur. Like if I was doing a cat with the in color with a bunch of stripes and stuff, 
it would definitely take longer than it does when you're just dealing with one color and um you know you're just like varying the the amount of color you're putting down all right so i need to figure out where the edge of his ear is and i see that if i go up from his ear i mean uh, go up from his eye to his ear it actually starts it starts here at the edge of his eye but it also comes up like this and i'm just talking about the white inner part of his ear And then the actual edge of his ear would be midway between this part and this part. So I'm going to say here, move this back a little bit. I started drawing it too far over. Yeah. And then have it come up. A pretty big ear. Be better to hear you with. <laughs> What's that? Red Riding Hood? Yeah. I have to fact check myself. And then the actual shape of his ear is just a bunch of white fur. All right, so the other side of his ear is going to be from, let's see, this. That's off here. There's like, like basically an eyebrow. And then that comes down about here. Line that up. Snap it, and then now I've got a reference point that I can build off the rest of his ear. That comes up and around. See, I was cutting too short here. Not good, Jeremy. But that's why you you do this. Um, I don't know what the term is for it. Uh, I got to look that up. But I I like to refer to it as like um, relational proportions. And what I mean by that is um, you're creating the proportions of different uh, parts. Of the drawing in relation to other parts of the drawing that you've already drawn so because i already drew his eye hole um i know how to kind of eyeball where his ear might be and the shape of his ear and so on so this kind of comes around man kind of close up here on the top of the page I always run into that problem. I draw the head too big or too uh, like too small, and then I end up running off the side of the page. That's something I need to work on. But I, I think it's going to work here. I mean, there's still plenty of room for him. But I don't know. Somebody who's like a stickler for composition might be like, yeah, you kind of screwed that up, buddy. But that's okay. When I take a picture of it, I'll just kind of crop it or something. It'll be fine um like if you were going to frame this or something like that you would just kind of cut off an edge or whatever make it a little bit smaller kind of position so you could push position it in the frame where like this part is folded under and this part's got a big old mat on it or something like that little cheats to uh fix your mistakes we got fur coming up on the inside of the ear here Fur coming up here. These are like longer pieces of fur. And then the next one comes out like this. And then this comes down. Fur to here. I do like working on this black paper. The best pictures to do on black paper are the ones where parts of the uh, profile, like there's so much white in this uh, dog's face that you end up having to show a lot more than maybe you would want to. The best one I enjoyed doing was that a black lab um, puppy that I did, um, I don't know, a few days back, less than a week ago. That one turned out really nice on black paper because you're just showing where the light is catching his face because he's a black dog. So it's black on black. And you're just catching where, you know, parts of his shiny coat are being highlighted. That's the best use of black paper. Um, if you're drawing a figure study, for example, um, you would draw, you know, how the light is shining off of a, a person's skin. Or if you're doing a profile, you're just like, I don't know, this isn't the best lighting in here, but you can notice that 
this side here is really lighted, lighted up, that's the parts you draw. You don't even bother with the other side. And it, it creates this really cool effect. Those are the best pictures to draw on black paper. But I wanted to draw a Siberian Husky, so this is what you get instead. Sometimes you gotta... Just gotta deal with it. And this is a picture I wanted to draw. Um, you know, a Siberian Husky would look really cool on white paper, too. It's just, I've got this black paper. I think it'd be kind of cool. All right, so this part is actually black. This part over here is black. So I might come back in and try to, like, more emphasize that. So because this is black, it kind of, you're just drawing the inside of his ear. And this kind of comes down from the other one. So I kind of want to say here is where it ends. So like when I'm looking at my reference picture, this stuff up here, this is a slight angle. Yeah, I feel good about that. So then I'll bring that down. Now, the base of his ear, actually, again, we're using relational proportioning, right? So like for better or worse, you know, we're drawing based off of things we are drew. By the way, I am drinking bourbon tonight. It's pretty good. Hey kid, how's it going? I still got your dog um, dog picture to draw. Um, I'll probably get to that next week. Um, I'm trying to knock out these uh, recognizable dogs uh, first just to practice with them. But I haven't forgotten you. Yeah, it does look good on black paper. And happy Friday to you as well. Let's see. So for better or worse, I know I have this eye here. So this is kind of where the edge of the ear would look. And the cool thing about it is as I bring it up and across, I feel like that looks right. Like this ear here. And of course, this is all white. So I'm just going to kind of shade that in real quick. Now, there is something a little bit different about this black paper than the other paper I use. So the white paper that I use is actually made, um, it's like a mixed media paper and it works really well for charcoal. It, it holds that charcoal as you're, um, as you're kind of blending, right? Yeah, yeah, I agree. So um, on the white paper, it blends really well because it kind of just pushes the charcoal in it. I don't think that's going to happen here because like even just lightly blending, it just kind of smudges things a bit and uh, it ends up darkening it considerably. But I'm going to do it just to remove some of my pencil lines and kind of just smudge things around. But I am definitely going to have to go back over it with... Um, more uh more white so i'm not worried about the mouth at this point because i can erase this to create the mouth of shadows at this point i'm just kind of smoothing out some of that fur creating um what would be the equivalent of a mid-tone and this comes off as uh like highlights but it's not really it's really like the mid-tone. The shadows, is, is, so this is, again, this is the reverse of what I usually do. This is, um, in this case, the black paper itself is our shadows. We have to get really, really white with this to create highlights, which we'll do, hopefully. Um, and then this kind of little bit of white that we put down is your mid-tone. That's, that's it. It's just those three things uh, in any kind of uh, black or monochromatic picture that you draw, whether it's in graphite or charcoal or in this case, white charcoal, unless you're doing a color picture. But even when you're doing a color picture, it's the same principles. You, you just have different colors you're using. So you still have 
highlights, shadows, and midtones. And I need to do another demonstration. I've done one before where if you do those those uh, highlights, shadows, and midtones, it really doesn't matter what color you use as long as you use like, um, you know, I don't know, like complementary colors and, and whatnot. But you can use, like I could be using blue right now to represent his face to kind of create a, a cool effect to him and then come back with, I don't know, like some pink or something for like bright highlights. A lot of people do that. You'll see like a lot of colors uh, being used in like uh, paintings that aren't real in uh, reality. Like it's not like they're, they see those things in reality. They just think that those colors look cool together. And that's the kind of artistic license that they're doing. So like orange looks really good with purple. Pink looks really good with green. I could draw a pink and green dog here right now, and it'll still look like a Siberian Husky if I'm following those those basic principles of um, highlights and shadows and all that. Which I'll probably do another demo of it sometime. Like if you go back through like all of my pictures, you'll find where I've done um, at least a couple like that. Like I've done some portraits where I, I did a horse one. It's back there on the wall. It's hard to see uh, where the horse is actually blue. Yeah, the horse is blue. And then it's got like purple um, shadows to it. Well, purple midtones, I guess. And then it's got yellow highlights and, and it looks really cool. I'll have to pull that down sometime and show it off. Or you can just go back through my uh, my shorts. I think it was in one of my shorts somewhere. So. Somebody told me today that like, I must be brave to go on YouTube and draw pictures. I don't know. I don't consider, I don't consider this all that scary. Scary would be standing up in front of people like in real life <laughs> trying to draw a picture. I would be petrified of that. I've got like a little bit of social anxiety. I don't do well with uh, presentations and speeches and things like that. Hey, how's it going? Because I can't. It, yeah, because I can. Sorry. Good to see you again. How's your Friday? Hopefully you guys have more interesting plans than me. I, I wanted to go out hiking, kayaking, something outdoors, because it's been really nice out. And then lo and behold, when I finally get a moment free, it starts raining here. And even though it was like 70 today, it's supposed to drop down to like 30 later in the week, which is so bizarre to me, but I guess that's spring. So spring works, I guess, even though it's almost May. I can't believe it's almost May. Like the entire month of uh the entire month of April just kind of like disappeared. Didn't we have Easter just like the other day? So I think that's enough smearing around. Let me get in and try to reinforce some of these um Some of these areas of uh color so i do want to kind of define my mouth a little bit while i'm sitting here let's see and again i gotta look beyond my mic so he's got the fur lines that come down there's a curve here that it doesn't look like i have in here very well so far relaxing night that's what i like to hear if you guys know of any good movies i am going to try to do that this weekend and i'm not sure if i care so much what i watch but i haven't seen anything really like the dungeons and dragons movie i haven't seen that so i'll, I'll go and see that if i can't think of something better 
and, and I've heard good things about the Dungeons and Dragons movie. The people who, who have gone to see it have been saying good things about it. I have uh, some friends that play Dungeons and Dragons, and uh, I've played it a couple of times myself. So I, I think I would enjoy that. But also, I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm looking for something with a little more meat to it. So at this point, I'm just kind of defining hit the like curve of his mouth. This side right here kind of comes up. This is one of those um, whisker rows. I'm gonna call it. I, somebody told me what the official name of it is, and I've forgotten it. I'm not a veterinarian. I don't know animal. Um, anatomy. The agent. Okay. All right. Oh, if it's on YouTube, yeah, I'll, I'll watch that. Um, I'll watch that. Uh, I was looking for something in a theater, maybe. But uh, as far as like recommendations for things to watch streaming, yeah, that's cool. I'll take any recommendations, to be honest. And then I'll hold you accountable if that movie sucks. I, I know who recommended it to me. And I will just like forever judge you. No, I'm just kidding. Be like, oh man, Trusted Living recommended this movie. And this movie was terrible. Actually, I like Jason Statham. I, I'm sure that movie's great. I think I'm pronouncing it. Jason Stratham? I always thought it was Jason Statham. Okay. All right, that's cool. Okay, so there are some areas in here that are like super white. So I'm going to try to I'm trying to get that in with this thing. Because you see how white that makes that? And these, these uh, charcoal sticks, they're not that expensive. Um, you can pick them up uh, at basically, you know, anywhere that sells uh, charcoal. I, I haven't seen them at Walmart. Where did I get this? I got this at, um, I was a cheap dollar store, I think. Um, was it Five Below or something like that? It's kind of like, I don't know, everything's $5 instead of $1, those type places. I got a whole set of charcoal. The thing about, the reason why I use charcoal so much is because charcoal is dirt cheap. Like... They do not charge a lot for that versus other things that I buy, like uh, the pastels, watercolors, things like that. Those can get pricey. Charcoal, it, it's never been expensive. Um, I can probably afford better art supplies, but I don't know. Until I get my skill set up to where I feel like I'm not going to just waste my money buying a bunch of supplies that I'm creating garbage out of. Like, there are some pastels I've been eyeing. And, um... Oh, okay, Statham. That's what I thought, but I, I really didn't know. So when you said Statham... Sidewalk chalk. I would love to get some some really cool colors of... Uh, side, like, not the pastel kind, right? So, like, um, the sidewalk chalk that is like, I don't know, like light pinks and light yellows and stuff. I'm not interested in that. But if I can get some proper colors where I can create like a really cool picture, I would love to do that. And just kind of like, just go out and do that on um, like a sidewalk. Like there's a park nearby that has this perfect sidewalk that I've been kind of like, it's a walking path that people use. And I've been eyeing it. And I'm like, man, if I had the proper sidewalk chalk um i would create something really cool and just surprise people like they'd be out going for their morning walk i wouldn't do this in the middle of the night but i don't know like i'd, I'd do it on a day when there wasn't that much traffic so i can like do it without people realizing that i'm doing it so it'd be kind of like temporary graffiti right um you know chalk will just wash away so I, I don't feel like I'd be getting in any trouble for it. I don't know. Maybe maybe somebody will be saying I'm vandalizing, even though it's like temporarily. Um, but I, I think that would be really cool. So like, just kind of 
temporary vandalism um, to create like a nice little mural on the sidewalk. That would be awesome. I'd be totally into that. But I don't, I don't know where to get a proper set of sidewalk chalk, like with, you know, like real colors. Not like the stuff the kids use where it's all like neon and stuff and super light. I, I'd want, I don't know, just like, I, I, I would love to create a face on a sidewalk. That would be awesome. Or uh, I'm sure you guys have seen it. If not, you can look it up. There's uh, people who do like 3D things on the sidewalk where it looks like um, you're going to fall into a pit or fall off a cliff or something like that. That would be cool. Maybe put in some like little floating stones that you can step step over or hop skip to. That would be cool. The Underworld with Dwayne Johnson. Ah. I might have heard that one. I'm not sure I've seen it. Yeah, like, YouTube's got a bunch of good movies nowadays. Um, Let's see, what streaming channels do I have? I have Disney Plus, so I can watch my Mandalorian. Um, And my Marvel shows. I've got... Uh, HBO Max, I've got Netflix, I've got Amazon Prime, oh, and I've got Huli, Hulu, not Huli, <laughs> I could screw that up, uh, I've got Hulu, Um, there's some other uh, channels out there that are free that have pretty good movies as well, like uh, Tubi, like, especially if you're looking for, like, older movies. Um, and, and they're not all old. Like, they're, like, my dad uses it to watch, like, old westerns and stuff like that. But there's some movies that have come out in modern times as well. Modern times, like, not the 1950s. But, um, yeah, Tubi's got some uh, decent free movies. So it's kind of weird. So you got this big chunky uh, piece of chalk, but it's softer than this uh, hard pastel. So like if I come in here and I try to draw, you see how light those are compared to this? It's because this is a softer um, stick. So all that stuff I've been talking about with like, you know, go, go with like a softer uh, charcoal if you want to create really dark areas. Um, the same applies when you're doing white. Uh, the softer it is, like, this is basically a soft pastel, and I've got even softer if I really wanted to, like, make something really stand out bright. But I, I'm happy with this. I think this looks cool. Um, but, yeah, so, like, you, you get your softer white charcoal. You get your, uh, like, even if you picked up pastels, like, say you wanted to do, um, you know, the same thing, like, do white on black paper. Uh, you can pick up an inexpensive set of pastels at like uh, Michael's or Hobby Lobby or something like that. And um, you're going to get that. Uh, make sure you look for soft pa pastels. Uh, and the softer, the better. Hard pastels are okay, but again, you're dealing with like light areas. They're, they're good for like, I don't know, like a, they call it a, an underpainting, but it's it, it, it's still a drawing. Um, they're good for that. But they are harder. So you're going to... Um, you're going to end up with lighter lines unless you're like really unless you're really working hard to get it to be bright. This this is going really nice. So this this uh soft uh white charcoal, I'm very happy with it. And the way you get these fine lines, hey honeybee, how's it going? Uh the way you get these kind of finer lines um drawing with something big, so big and clunky, you just use the um I think my dog's biting at a shadow. Um <laughs> you just use the uh the the edge of it. And um, you can get like relatively, you know, basic, basic, almost like pencil lines. Uh, you can do the same thing with uh, uh, the pastels too. The pastels come in different forms. Like some of them, you know, you can get pastel pencils. That's what this this thing here is. Um, but you can get, you know, like round pastels. You can get these square ones, um, or 
I think sometimes they call them stick pastels. I like all of them for different purposes. Um, but I, I like how this is going for like fur. So I think that looks cool. Now there's some more that comes out from his eyebrows and stuff. I'm going to skip over that for now and come back to it. I just really want to get like his mask of fur kind of going. This is like really wide area that comes off of his uh, the corner of his eye here. So this bit is comes across. I, I like I like that effect. Like just that one line there. That's so cool. Yeah, so th this is actually white charcoal. It's basically chalk. It's basically pastel. Um, technically speaking, all charcoal is black. Um, although you can get these different colors, um, they come in different pigments and, and such. But they're not they're not actual charcoal. Charcoal comes from like burning wood, and um, or, or compressing wood and, and so on. Um, this is a different process. It's more like pastel, um, but they call it white white charcoal just because. They they usually sell it with charcoal. So there's this um there's this style of drawing uh called uh Conte. Conte, I'm probably pronouncing that incorrect. I think it's French, but it's a uh, Conte art and it, it consists of drawing exactly how I've been describing, you know, where you do your shadows, your midtones, and, and um and you do it on tone paper and then you use white for your highlights. Uh and th again they call that Conte art and um usually when you buy charcoal um you can get charcoal by itself but also if you buy a set there's sometimes a set that comes with a white charcoal pencil because it's so common of a way of drawing with charcoal that they usually sell it together they usually sell like uh some some form of um like i think in my last cheap charcoal set i bought i got Somewhere around here. Oh, I can't find it. But I, I got a white pencil along with it. And it just came with the set. But if you can't find it in the set, they sell them individually. Like you can get a whole you can get a whole nother set of just white charcoal pencils. And you know, usually it's like a one size fits all situation. I haven't seen a lot of variety, but if you can find one that gives you like different hardnesses, that's ideal because again, this is coming out so bright on the white because it's it's a very soft um charcoal <laughs> master artist <laughs> you're way too kind i appreciate that you guys are so nice why are you guys so nice to me i do appreciate it oh this dog let's see this dog so I haven't drawn the eyes yet, and if I get the expression right from the reference photo, it looks like this dog did something bad. Like it's looking up at the owner like, I'm sorry. Um, the pupil is going to be kind of up where it's looking up at the master. So right now it kind of looks like it's looking down just because I haven't drawn the eyes yet. And in fact, maybe I should just move to the eyes. But um, yeah, like I, I'm probably not going to capture the expression that I see very well, but it's definitely... It's definitely a dog that's been bad. I mean, it's still a good boy, but he he uh, yeah he he made a mistake. So this is all going to be like a little bit lighter through here. Put that in a little bit, kind of. It's like a little lighter area through there. All right, I think that's good enough to where I can kind of focus on the eyes a little bit because it is kind of a little unnerving for him to have these uh, sockets. So there is like a lot of dark shade here above the eye. And I'm going to do this really lightly so I can kind of get an idea. Because I didn't, I didn't even draw circles for the eyes. Let's see. I want to, I want to make sure it's circular. Circular. It seems like there's way too much white over here, but I can fix that up. Yeah, 
<laughs> it looks like the <laughs> well we kind of so um that husky that attacked your jack russell the other day uh it was asked that i do like a like a like a mugshot photo for it and uh that's really what i'm drawing this is uh have you seen this dog uh kind of uh picture for the uh, wanted poster Hopefully your Jack Russell is okay, and, and I'm not making a terrible joke. If I am, I'm sorry. Yeah, these dogs are weird. Um, they, uh, they often are just doing goofy, weird things. I've never had a Siberian... Well, maybe. Maybe when I was a kid. I don't know if it was a Siberian Husky or not. We had a, a dog that kind of makes me think it was a um, Siberian Husky, uh, but it, it was all white. I don't, I'm trying to remember, I don't know. We called it Ranger. It was a beautiful dog from what I remember. I was like super young, so that's why I don't know exactly what kind of dog it was. But if somebody were to tell me it was a Siberian Husky, of a white variety, assuming they come in that variety and it wasn't something else, I, I would believe them. So as I'm more confident about this eye, I'm, I'm kind of going darker. But yeah, you've got the pupil, he's kind of looking up. Um, I think I'm going to erase some of the side over here because I want to, I want him to be kind of looking off that way. And what what kind of sucks about this paper, but is also kind of cool about this paper, is there's really not a lot of tooth to it. So um, this this eraser will basically just completely remove. Oh wow, puncture wounds. Oh, I'm so sorry. I was making a joke, and and your dog actually got hurt. I'm so sorry about that. Yeah, I hope your dog's okay. Well, now this really is a wanted poster. Yeah, they can, I don't know, like, I, I hear that they're, like, overly protective. And, um, they can, they can cause some, uh, hurt. Well, I, I hope I don't, I'm not triggering you by drawing a picture of the dog that is, your nemesis or something <laughs> i was i was just trying to draw a pretty picture of a dog sorry yeah he's kind of looking up um i don't know maybe maybe he didn't get in trouble well, all right, so the idea here is that this dog is sorry about what he did yesterday. There we go. That's the story I'm I'm, I'm uh, forming around this dog. So this is weird. I'm drawing what I see, and it seems odd to me, but this is, like, really white through here, and it's kind of hard to see, but there is this dark rim that kind of comes around it, like this white line. It's very odd. I didn't know that this the dogs were like this. I, I don't know if this is part of... The iris and the iris is raised up if he's got kind of like, I don't know. It's just very interesting to me, the anatomy here. Because I, I didn't know dogs were like this. I'm not a vet. Never went to school to learn dog anatomy. Just drawing what I see. And it's kind of interesting. I like the highlight here. So this part, I'm going to try to make really light as it is. And I'm going to try to make this part really light as it really is. That works cool. See, 
Oh, wow, we're already an hour into this. I, I thought this was going to go a lot quicker. I'm surprised. Yeah. They are they are very wolf like. So yeah, I'm I'm glad that you say that your dog's gonna be okay. It's kinda messed up. Got some fur coming up into so he he kinda has this black area around his eye. So this below his eye is mostly all white. So I'm just going to pull all that down. I wasn't shooting for hyperrealism on this, but this is actually coming out very realistic. You know, I was I was intending to just kind of do a loose style, but I guess I guess I just felt like doing something super realistic today. Cool. All right, so over here on this side, you don't really see all that much. I want to make sure it lines up with this. But you don't see much of anything over here. Kind of just, that was easy. That, that eye's done. <laughs> Let's see, he's got a little bit of fur coming off there. Of course, you know, I've mentioned this before, when drawing pets, you don't want to draw every individual piece of fur. You'll go mad trying to do it. Um, and I, I don't even think it's realistically possible to do that. Um, or at least not with my skill set. But you do want to kind of give a impression of individual hairs. And some of the best places to do that is on these edges where it kind of like comes out. You can kind of almost like eyelashes uh if you were doing like a person's portrait same deal you just kind of have these things come off and like a, a person's hair you just kind of have like little wisps come off so in this case it's got like these individual whiskers i guess i don't know what these are called um they kind of come off the top of the eye so uh, you know little places like that are a good place to um put in those type of effects if you can so this kind of comes up, kind of gets really white through here, but not completely white. So I have to leave in a little bit of that black. And go back to this. I do like drawing with these sticks a lot because I, I, I enjoy drawing in pastel and this is very pastelish. And you can make basically the same marks if you're careful as you can with the pencil anyway. The pencil is great for doing like fine detail um, because you have a little bit more, like you have to pay attention where the edge is and stuff and like and see this edge is starting to wear down so I have to kind of switch over to get that sharp edge. Um, or I can grab that sandpaper that I used to create the white chalk uh, powder and um, kind of shave it down and get that sharp edge as well. A lot of times people draw these uh, type of pictures, the uh, white on black with a uh, colored pencil. Uh, if you do that, I can recommend using uh, the Prismacolor. Uh, because the white in that set is is very opaque, and that's what really what you need. You need like an opaque white. This is all white through here. So you can't really do that much blending on this particular paper. So I have to be careful not to like leave any any kind of like crazy texture. Because, like, if I come in and blend, it just basically erases it almost, which is fine on these edges here, but probably not the effect that you're going for.
I do like those eyes. Those eyes look really sharp. It looks like a, like a moon. Yeah, <laughs> my my traumatize your dog. Why am I laughing? That is not funny. Stop it, Jeremy. Don't take offense to me laughing. I, I make jokes sometimes that. But no, don't traumatize your dog. It would be really cool to um, do like a nice, like actual chalk picture on a chalkboard or on the asphalt, like um, uh, because of Cam was mentioning, that would be very cool. Like some really cool uh, sidewalk walk. Like if you've got a really black piece of asphalt, um, like freshly lean or, or something like that, you could use white and create a really cool picture. I think. Almost like you're just drawing on a chalkboard. I'm going to try to smudge with my finger. Yeah, every time I do that, it like takes away so much. But, I don't know. Just to kind of smooth it out a little bit. It's kind of cool. So this is, you know, smudging like this. It's how you can cover like large portions of it. But this is too smooth now compared to some of these other areas. So I do have to come back. It's really white in the uh, reference photo. So I'm totally cool with that. But I kind of have to go over it again just to kind of create that same texture so that it's consistent with the other areas where I actually drew individual lines or not lines, but marks as we call them. Being an artist is all about laying down marks. Marks. Yeah. There we go. Not lines, marks. I mean, I've been really trying to practice and get the terminology right too. So that like, if somebody is watching this thing, not just, to fall asleep, but to like actually learn something, um, I'm not steering them in the wrong direction. So you can call these lines if you want to, but I think uh, they're properly referred to as marks. So through here, it is dark, but you do have all of these like individual white hairs. Um, I'm getting those myself in my beard. Um, so I, I do want to kind of draw those in. And they are kind of going in different directions, but they all kind of mostly flow upwards through here. And then over here, they kind of flow out from the eyeball. And really, that's the trick to drawing hair or, you know, in this case, fur. You just kind of follow the contour of where the hair goes. Like, you know, a person's hair is parted in the middle. You draw all your lines away from that middle. Same with uh, dog fur. In this case, they're all kind of coming away from this, this um, eyelid area. You know, with a few exceptions. You can just put in like little tiny lines and stuff to kind of reinforce that there is like little tiny stubbly um, hair in that eyelid as well. Honestly, you could call this a wolf and it'd be the same drawing. Like if I was trying to draw a wolf in black and white, it would probably look very similar to this. So this is where it kind of disappears into the darker area. So you, you have to be more careful and just, you know, 
just be mindful that you kind of want to space them out a bit, draw them a little bit lighter, shorter, things like that. Because they're really just kind of like specks of individual hairs up here that turn white. Otherwise, it's it's mostly black. So this is kind of almost more like stippling, um, where, you know, if you're familiar with stipple art, it's just a bunch of dots. And then they're like kind of closely arranged to uh, create areas that are like darker, or in this case, lighter. So notice how here I kind of put those two lines kind of closer together, kind of gives the impression that that's a lighter area. And I still want to kind of control which direction they're going. So in this case, they're kind of up and around and then flowing into the ear. Don't let me forget to finish this ear. Um, so they kind of do flow in a different, like in the same direction, sorry. Um, but they do kind of vary so that it kind of comes around and, and so on. And then as they get further out, they get longer. So they're like really short up kind of close and then they get longer as they disappear into the ear. So I'm not drawing every single individual hair, but I'm giving the um, impression of hair. And honestly, that's kind of the same way you draw grass and, you know, human hair, people's beards, mustaches, things of that nature. Um, you draw a few of them so that people know they're there. You give me the impression of fur doing it this way. And guess what? That's exactly how it looks in the photo too. So and then you kind of vary it up a little bit, like draw some a little bit like thicker than others. Some a little bit closer together. And it starts coming out, they get longer. Right here, there's a, like a little clump. And it, it would be the same way if you're drawing, um, you know, black on white and using like regular charcoal. You, you do the same, same thing. It's just here you're drawing the highlights and not the shadows. In regular charcoal, you're drawing the shadows. Oh, okay. I will uh, look for that on Amazon. I appreciate that because I can. Because now that it's getting warmer, except for this weekend, which is supposed to get colder for some reason, uh, in my area, it is getting warmer. I've been, I've been going for like, um, you know, semi-daily walks in the park. And I, I, every time I see that walking, um, that, that sidewalk they've got there, I just want to decorate it. I want to draw like a little trap door, maybe somebody coming out of the trap door. I'll, I'll film all this, by the way. I'll, I'll put this on the channel. Um, it'll be so cool. But, I mean, if they've got 12-piece uh, colored chalk and it's like really cool, uh, I will be all on that. Because that is a project that I've been dreaming of. I just haven't looked into it. So I, I really don't know what kind of... I, I know that, like, if you go to Walmart or something like that, they do have, like, street chalk. But it's for, like, kids to draw, like, I don't know, like... I don't know, like, flowers and <laughs> whatever on the ground. Um, I want to I wanna draw, like, a really cool picture. I want to draw a freaking Siberian Husky in the asphalt. That would be awesome. Yeah, it's, a, it's it's basically temporary graffiti. Like, honestly, I want somebody to come up and complain. <laughs> I want somebody to come up and complain about me drawing a beautiful picture on the freaking sidewalk. Because I'll be like, uh, let me just, like, you know, get some rain here and it's gone. You know, what, what picture? I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> But I, I do like the um I like the concept of that temper temporary art like these pictures that I draw here they serve absolutely no purpose to anybody other than me like you see I hang them up on the wall and I forget about them they're not meant to last forever um 
I'm, I'm, I'm just keeping them so that I have kind of a record of what I did this year on my like journey of self-improvement. Um, but you know, next year, the year after that, I, I'm not going to keep them probably. Um, if I do keep them, they'll be in like some box or something like that. I'll, I'll never look at them. Uh, so why should art be permanent if you're, if you're not really looking, looking at it now, it, it's different. If, if this was my dog, if I was drawing this dog because it's actually my dog, it, it have more sentimental value. I would probably frame it and hang it up on the wall and look at it all the time and be like, oh, it's such a pretty dog. But it's, it's not my dog. So, you know, I'm okay with this being temporary. Um, so the idea of drawing a, a full-on mural on the sidewalk and it's only going to last two, three days, that's fine. I get enjoyment out of that. That would be awesome. Temporary gra graffiti. I like the idea of it. And I'll, I'll make it really nice. I'll make it so nice that the park will be like, oh, man, it'd be awesome if we could preserve this. But they're not going to be able to because, <laughs> clinking my glass, um, they're not going to be able to preserve it because it's temporary. I love the concept of that. Because, like, my own personal, like, philosophy is that... Don't that puppy. My own per personal philosophy is that all of us are really on only on the earth for like a short period of time anyway. You know, we're all transitory um, beings, so why shouldn't our art be? But then again, I also do appreciate things that last forever, like in, in museums like, uh, you know, Da Vinci's and stuff. It, it's so awesome to see a Da Vinci that the guy painted 500 years ago, you know? <laughs> I will be the Banksy of sidewalk art. That would be awesome. No, I'm not Banksy. <laughs> I am a fan, though. Uh, that uh, documentary. And so I had, I had known about Banksy just because he like pops up in like articles and stuff like that. But I didn't really know much about him until I saw that documentary exit through the gift shop. If you guys are interested in Banksy, you probably already have already seen it. It's been out for a while, but I highly recommend it. It's such a good documentary about Banksy. And um, yeah, but I love his philosophy. You know, like the, the painting he had in the museum that was just kind of like run through a shredder. That's, that's, that's great. I love that. I don't believe that art is really meant to be permanent or don't get me wrong some art is is meant to be permanent but i don't see anything wrong with temporary art either um if you're if you're drawing something just to be consumed hey go lay down cool you get tapping all over the uh, hardwood floor this dog's jealous that i'm drawing some other dog all right go lay down we'll go out later Um, what was I saying? You messed me up. <laughs> so if you think about it, so like, yeah, it is a great documentary. So if you, if you think about it, so I'm drawing these pictures for YouTube. Somebody will come and watch it. Maybe they'll watch it two, three times, but certainly on the shorts, the shorts go through. Yeah, there's, well, there's not a lot that survived. I don't know exactly how many uh, portraits, uh, or not portraits, just paintings in general that uh, Da Vinci did. Um, I don't know how many have survived to the modern day. You would think, just because of how great they are, um, that he probably created a lot of them, because it really is practice makes perfect. Uh, there is one hanging in the National Institute, National Art Gallery in Washington, D.C. I actually got to see that one in person. Um, I believe that one he did when he was in his 20s. And it's a lot different than the ones he did in his um, later years. Um, so from that, I would guess that he did more than 15 paintings because there is a uh, there's definitely a uh, path of improvement there over the course of uh, his career. So like he didn't just one day all of a sudden all of a sudden draw i mean not draw but paint the mona lisa you know the mona lisa is definitely an acquired skill 
that he would have had to create a lot of um, additional paintings to get to that level. Now, I, I have no idea what that number is, uh, but I would suspect it's more than 15. Now, if you said that only 15 survived, like we only know of 15 and stuff like that, yeah, that, that's probably true. I Or at least I have no reason to dispute that. Um, but yeah. As far as like the temporary nature of art, um, Yeah, I'm definitely not. I'm not painting a swastika. What? You need better friends, trusted. No, I I would um, what would I paint? I I would I would paint like a natural uh, like mural or something like that. I don't know, some kind of nature thing or or some some sort of optical illusion. Like it would be cool if you're walking down a path, and it looks like um. You know, you're going to fall off a cliff or something, or there's a waterfall there, or, or something of that nature. That would be kind of cool. But yeah, art that is uh, temporary is not a bad thing. Um, the, the thing I was going to say is, uh, you know, maybe these, these uh, live streams and stuff, they stick around. But certainly the short ones, you know, they go into somebody's feed, you watch it, and then it disappears. It's like, and, and it only lives for like a little bit of time, like the whole YouTube algorithm that you hear about. It pops up, people watch it, and then it might not, it might as well not even exist. Like you can delete it and it would not matter at all because nobody's watching it anyway. Um, nobody goes back and rewatches these, uh, these, uh, these shorts. Um, the same is true of like Instagram. You have an Instagram feed, the photos come across, you see it, you consume it, you like it, you don't like it. And you move on, you, you swipe to the next picture. I would, I would argue that all modern art is transitory. So why not sidewalk chalk, right? In fact, it would be kind of cool. Like if I was feeling super creative, I would try to create something that maybe says that it's like a message, you know, like, like maybe the sidewalk would be turned into like an Instagram feed where, um, you know, you're seeing all these individual pictures and individual square, uh, panels. Yeah. This actually sounds good. Somebody write this down because this is a great idea. So, um, yeah, I, I had heard that, uh, because I can, um, so all right, so this is my concept for uh, sidewalk art, right? So you have on the sidewalk individual panels where you have individual pictures in them, and they're all like maybe selfies. And it's meant to represent an Instagram feed where each individual panel is an in individual Instagram picture. But if you think about it, um, you know, if you really analyze it, what you're really looking at is temporary art. Just like the sidewalk will wash away, so will the Instagram feed. Because nobody goes back and, and digs through all the um, all the pictures on the Instagram feed. They just see it as uh, the algorithm pushes it to them, and they like it, and then they move on. Now, I'm not. I'm not even. I'm not even saying that's bad. I'm just saying that's how it is nowadays. So, yeah, I, th I think that would be an interesting commentary. Feel free to steal the idea, too. Like, if you guys want to do that in your neighborhood, take my idea and just run with it. Because I, I think it's so cool. Somebody needs to, somebody needs to make that, that art. Where it's sidewalk art meant to be like a, um, like an Instagram feed. What are we doing on time? I need to, I need to speed this up. I'm drawing individual things, talking, not getting this done.
All right, so I'll come back to like snout a little bit, and in the meantime, and I feel like it's, I'm comfortable with being a little bit looser as I get away from the focal points. So the focal points in this case are the um, the eyes, and kind of like up here, maybe to a lesser degree, is the nose. And then as you get into this area, you can be a little bit looser with it. We'll justify in that. You still want to follow the contours of the fur. But you can get a little bit thicker with the lines. A little bit looser. You still want it to look combed. <laughs> I wonder if you would get in trouble. I, I, I honestly I, I am wondering that. Like, would you get in trouble creating temporary graffiti? I don't feel like you should. And if you, sh if you do, then, like, you know, kids do this stuff. Kids use sidewalk chart. I don't know. Maybe they only do it with permission or something. But at this point, I'm going to kind of vary between the chalk stick and then the end of, like, the, uh, the pencil. Um, use the chalk stick to lay down bigger areas and then come back and kind of blend it in with the, uh, the pencil. I think that that seems to be a, a good effect. You get the mouth started down here. And then also I can kind of choose where to end this. Like obviously his face continues on out past the frame of the uh, paper itself. So I have to kind of like choose at some point where to stop, you know, and I, I think this is probably a good area through here. Let me get that line going. And then there's a little tuft of fur probably over here. Just so that it doesn't end in a hard edge. And then, of course, all of this can be wiped through here. And you don't want to overdo it. Uh, you kind of want to leave some of that texture there. Um, just to kind of, again, sell the idea that there's fur and it's not just like a wall of white. Which, in the in the reference photo, there is like some variation. So there is some lights and... and um, you know, of the hair itself, and then there's some shadows in between. So this little texture that you've got going on here where, you know, the, left by the, the chalk itself, just how the chalk interacts with the paper, it actually does um, work well with the, uh, with, uh, works well with the idea of um, convincing people that this is hair. Now, there is like some actual shadow in here. And again, because these blending stumps seem to just kind of lift that up off the page, you can use that to kind of create these shadows. And in this case, I like that it's kind of like this gray area here. But if that's not enough for you, you can also kind of lift it up with your needed eraser. And that's probably overdoing it, so I come back in, draw individual lines to kind of fill that in and blend that in. Because there, there was a bit of shadow there, and I kind of like that a little bit better. So, I don't know, kind of looks realistic to me. All right, through here, we've got some more lines, lots of lines everywhere. More fur coming down. And all of this kind of just disappears off into here. So I'm, I'm kind of happy with this area. I still need to work on this area, the ears. We don't know time. We've got 30 minutes or so to keep with my goal of making these in two hours or less. I actually thought this was going to go a lot quicker. I didn't realize there were so many 
um, details that I could put in here and then, you know, run it off of the mouth. I do like how this is turning out, though. It looks very, very nice. So here I'm just going to put in some pencil lines so that it's not so smooth, because if you remember, I kind of like hand blended through here. It doesn't really show up on camera very well, but this little, these like little lines that I'm putting in, kind of in a loose style, helps to uh, create some texture. It would be kind of fun to like just, I don't know, like maybe just kind of make arrangements with them beforehand. Just like, look, I'm going to go in, I'm going to do a nice community friendly uh, mural on the side, uh, on your uh, parking lot. But I do want to do it at the police station. I'm not above sneaking into a, a police station's parking lot and doing it. But I, I know that they have like all these uh, cameras and stuff like that. So that would that would not go well. Especially after I've admitted to do, <laughs> considering doing that on freaking YouTube. So through here, we've got some longer hair sticking out, kind of just draping down. I'm going to I'm adjusting a little bit so that I can look around my mic, which is getting in my way. So through here, you've got these lines of, you know, these whisker lines or whatever they're called. Again, somebody told me what they were called. I think Just Dave did, and I've done forgotten. But you've got these lines where, you know, whiskers come out. And then you've got kind of like this dark one down here, so I've got to be careful not to fill that in. Let's see, we've got one, two, three of these. So we've got one, two, and this one would be like a third. Yeah. All right, I'm kind of happy with that. I think that looks uh, more or less realistic. Now this one, one kind of comes around and I don't know why I'm doing curves there. It needs to be more straight. So this kind of comes into the top of his mouth or his lip or whatever dog's lips are called. And then you do kind of want this like little ridge here for his mouth. And then you got little individual hairs coming down through here. And then through here, it's light, but not that light. And then that kind of comes down. And then this area here, it's kind of lit up. That's about all there is to his mouth. Um, that's the beauty of working in, in contrast. So, like, you've got this realistic looking mouth now when it's really just you know adding adding highlights um and leaving the um the actual dark areas that make up his mouth just leave them in there and you got like little got some whiskers here that are dark in the picture but i'm i'm still going to pencil them in just to kind of suggest that there are some there's not actually a lot to his nose here because most of it's dark and in shadows. I am pretty happy with that actually. See, does it look like yeah, it looks like doggo? All right, so we've got to put in his mane. So it gets lighter over here. So light touch, but then it gets darker through here. I want to leave this dark for now because I'm going to come back with the pencil and fix up that. But this, I'm actually, so it's more lit up in the picture than I'm going to draw it because I don't want to overdo this area. 
It's not the focal point. I can lie and say that that's cast in shadow. No one would know. So I'm going to leave that a little bit dark. Uh, yeah, so if you go to my About page, uh, Because I Can, uh, the About tab on this uh, YouTube channel, my email's up there. Um, yeah, people send me emails of uh, pictures that they've done. Um, I love it. Uh, I, I, I encourage more of that. Um, uh, at some point, I'll probably get around to creating a Discord, like maybe when I have more people watching and stuff like that, where we can do things like that and share and kind of like... I don't know, like, I would love if people, you know, criticized my work and kind of um, came up with some ideas of things that worked well for them. And um, I'm happy to do the same with others. And, and even if it's not like a, a critique, I feel like that's a little more formal than it has to be. I just love seeing what other people do. So yeah, I, I, please, uh, my email address is on that about tab. Um, uh, please send me your, your art so I can have a look. I, I'd love to know who uh watches my channel and and um you know what kind of artists they are and stuff because maybe i'll i'll tailor some of my art to what they're working on so you know i don't know i i i could probably try to do some uh like anime illustrations things like that if like a lot of people are into that um if people are into like doing watercolors um i know some of the people who watch my show they do try to paint um and uh, I think some of them use like, uh, I don't know, acrylics and stuff like that. So it's on my wish list to actually try painting and doing acrylics at some time. So um, now I probably won't be able to pick up all the skills that you guys have out there and stuff like that. But I, I'm, I'm willing to try just so I can participate so that I'm creating content that you guys enjoy. So please, please uh, send that, send it across. Um, so you know I, I i i do get kind of busy sometimes so don't be upset if uh i mean if uh let's see if a kid is still in here and lorraine um you guys have sent me emails you know that i kind of suck at uh being like really quick about replying to emails um so don't think that i've forgotten that you sent me an email just because i don't get to it right away but i will definitely take a look at the, the stuff and um, I'll probably look at it pretty quick, but I don't respond to emails as quick as I'd like to. So, um, give, give, give me like some, uh, some leeway on that, but if that's all cool with you, yeah, please, please send. I really want to see what people are up to. You, you, you gotta understand. I look at art. Yeah. See the kids in here. Um, Kid will let you know that uh, he sent me to, or he or she sent me some uh, pictures. I don't know, like could be a she. Um, sent me some pictures of their pets because uh, I I asked for uh, that from uh, audience members and stuff uh, quite some time ago. I still haven't gotten to their picture. That's just the way I am. Sorry, I keep uh, uh, Lorraine. I'm supposed to send you that picture of Forrest Finn I drew, so that's on my uh, list. I know that you uh you requested that and I saw that and I'm like yeah I'll do that. Haven't done it yet. <laughs> I did finally get P Denver's uh, picture out. If you guys recall, I, I drew a picture of P Denver a little while back. Finally got that out in the mail. So I'm getting better. the The New Year's resolution was to get more uh, be more creative and get better at drawing. It was not to be better at answering emails. <laughs> but that doesn't mean I don't read them. I, I do read them. And I, um, if you send me pictures of your art, I look at people's pictures all the time. Uh, I look at people's uh, drawings. I, I, I go on Reddit. I look at pe the things people put up there and stuff like that. So don't feel like you're imposing um, having me look at your pictures because I love looking at art. And I will love to look at your art. So, yeah, please. All right, that all looks good. The only thing that's really missing, I think at this point, is finishing up those ears. And then I think we can probably call this done. Um, oh, that's good bourbon. I'm going to have another sip. 
All right, so secretly I only do these live streams so that I can drink. That's what it's all about. No, I'm just kidding. All right, so I'm gonna start with this ear over here so that I can go ahead and get that out of the way because I don't I don't really like reaching across the page. For one thing, it, it's bad on camera. You guys can't really see what I'm doing. And then the other thing about it is I don't want to like smudge anything. So I have to be careful. Now, these ears are not um, the focal point. So if it gets kind of blurry, if there's like a lack of detail, I'm okay with that. Um, so you got some shapes in here that kind of fade into a slightly darker area. You guys know how ears work. I assume most of you guys have pets. Uh, I know that, yeah, probably everybody here does. Um, if not, you have had pets in the past. You are at least aware of what dogs look like. Um, you know that the ears are uh, concave, kind of conical. And um, the inside of it is uh, lighter. So because I can't really blend very well on this paper, um, what I'm going to do is put down these basic shapes and then come back over it with the pencil. And that's going to be my blending method, I think. All right, so that's the basic shapes there. Um, but of course, this is not this dark through here. So I'm just going to quickly patch in the inner ear. Put in some fuzzies. That's a technical term. That's what, that's what it's actually called. It's called fuzzies. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> totally made up term. Fuzzies is where you just kind of like put these like little lines in. Um, not necessarily in the uh, reference photo. It just makes sense to put them in there to kind of show um, contrast with the rest of his head so that you know uh, what part is here and what part isn't. Now, uh, like I said, I can't really blend this. Like if this was regular charcoal and I was doing this on my mixed media paper, uh, I would probably pull out my blending tool, but I can't really do that because this is uh, kind of not a lot of tooth to it. So I'm just going to go over these shapes that I put in with the pencil. And that's basically going to do the exact same thing. So there are a bunch of different ways you can blend when you're drawing. Uh, one is using the blending stump. I do that all the time, but that's not the only method. The other ways is just kind of go soft over it and just kind of like work it into the other bits. So like, as you can see, I'm just kind of, well, you don't know that how soft I'm applying pressure on my pencil, but I'm, I'm doing kind of a soft touch here. And just kind of going back over these shapes that uh, I blocked in with the, uh, the stick. And uh, kind of doing the similar things to what your blending tool would end up doing, or your blending stick would end up doing anyway. Now, this is all dark. Um, through here, I did put in, it's hard to see on the camera, that kind of smoky, it, it was kind of pointless. It's, it's not really doing much for us, but there is a little bit of smoky area up here that I put in earlier with um, that uh, uh, grounded white charcoal. You know, my this leftover from uh, sharpening my pencil. So it does kind of show up on camera if you squint, but what I'm able to do is erase some of that smokiness and create this darker effect that kind of creates that ear. So I'm going with that. It's not perfect, but what can you do, you know? And then that dark area, let me get this a little bit finer. The dark area also comes around and kind of the top of the ear is also erased. So some of the same techniques that you use and um, 
and working with regular charcoal on white paper, white paper, you can you can do the same on black paper. Um, so you're just lifting up that white smoky area that you put in earlier. Now, if I had more time, I would probably like put smoky area over here as well, uh, so that I can kind of better define um, the nose, so that it's not just all contrasted out. But I'm not going to do that uh, just because like you know. We've been at this for a while. So same deal over here. Just kind of just erase some of the um, that smokiness that I put in. Kind of let the viewer know that the ear is actually black on the outside. And I think that kind of comes around here. So okay. There you go. So you really have to be paying attention to even see that, but it's there. So if you're looking at it on a wall or something like that, you can kind of see that. So I'm going to try the same thing over here as I did on the other side. Actually, I don't like how dark that is. I think this should come across a little bit more. I can fill in some of that texture. I like that a little bit better. Kind of find that line a little bit better. It's starting to look like a Siberian Husky to me. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's the bourbon. <laughs> so I'm going to come in, try to do the same thing over here that I did on the other side. Just kind of define the big shape with this um, charcoal stick. A white charcoal stick and by the way if you do get into drawing with pastels which if i ever get a proper set of charcoal uh not charcoal pastels uh colors i'm probably going to do like some landscapes the same way but um anyway if you do get a set of pastels they'll probably come in the stick format this is a very popular format for them you can get them in like round or pencils or something like that but if you do get the sticks which I recommend why not um, this is this is how you draw detail you just kind of put it on the side kind of use the sharp edges of it and you just kind of quickly move across the page to put in in this case a bunch of hair I do need to actually practice with color more because like, I don't know, it's not my strong suit. Sometimes I do okay with it, but getting the colors right, making it look the way I want, I have a lot of room to grow there. Sometimes I, I go into my comfort zone just because I want to create a pretty picture. And that's not really how you progress. You know, if you always stay in your comfort zone, that's just where you're always going to be, which, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe you're not on a mission like I am. I'm on a mission to improve. So I need to get out of my comfort zone sometimes. So you're going to see me fail a lot because I'm, I, I do try to do things, um, that I'm not good at. It goes back to that courage thing earlier. Like, is it really courage? to uh, go on uh, YouTube and, um, you know, draw pictures when, you know, you're basically telling people like, look, I'm going to fail, you know, like uh, I'm going to screw it up. Uh, it's not going to look right. Uh, I feel like setting those expectations, you know, like letting people know in advance that this is not a master art show. You're not going to find um, perfect technique and everything. Uh, you're going to find somebody who's still learning trying getting better at it i don't feel like that takes a lot of courage because you're setting the expectations straight off and then sometimes you're surprised you know like i'm, I'm setting the expectation that i'm going to screw up this year right and then if i don't screw it up we're we're both pleasantly surprised you know i'm just as surprised as you are that i didn't screw it up i, I like that i like that dynamic you know 
That's why I always, you know, start off. Well, I usually start off these pictures like, I don't know how this is going to go because I really do not. Um, I feel like the longer I do this and the more I practice, uh, I can kind of get some, some consistency and have some expectations of how it's going to go. But even when I, I do have high expectations, sometimes I still screw it up. It's just the way it goes. You know, what can you do? I would argue that other people screw up too, you know, like the, the actual master artists, I think that they screw up all the time and guess what? They just don't publish it. They don't have a YouTube show where they're doing it live and, and screwing up rather publicly like that. So I am going to, all right. So it's pretty much done, but I am going to come back and kind of maybe add some extra highlights just to kind of emphasize some areas. Like, I think that if I add some highlights in here above the, the, um, so we've talked about this before when you're creating a, a composition, you're really trying to direct people's eyes, right? So like you want them to focus on something. In this case, I want them to focus on the eyes. So obviously the eyes are pretty here. It look, kind of looks like a moon. Um, so I accomplished that goal, but to reinforce it and really bring people in, um, you can create that extra contrast of really bright area around. Now, fortunately, this is also in the uh, reference photo, so I don't feel like I'm cheating reality doing it. But if I come in and I really make this highlighted, this area is dark. Where's your eyes drawn? Your eyes are drawn to the lightest area. Um, this really works well in landscapes. So like if you're doing a landscape picture, and you want to draw somebody's eyes to like follow a particular path or something, put in, put in some light areas on that path. Um, it really, really does help draw in the eyes and create movement in the picture. So of course that looks weird if I don't do the other side. So I am going to add a little bit of highlight over here, but because I kind of want their eyes to kind of focus around here, I'm not going to do as much. I'm just going to add simple highlights, right? And because that kind of makes the nose washed out, I'm going to add some highlights in the nose, but again, not so much. I'm just going to put in, you know, just some areas or some, uh, some lighter areas and then some lighter areas through here. Just little highlights. And at this point, it really doesn't even matter if it's in the reference photo. You're, it, um, when you reach the end of your picture, uh, when, when you're about to call it done, it really doesn't matter what the reference photo looks like. At this point, you're trying to make your picture internally not uh, consistent and, and, and nice. So in this picture, I see that this area here is kind of washed out, right? So I, I will, regardless of whether there's fur or not, regardless of whether the markings on this particular dog has a dark area here or a light area, I'm going to add a little bit of light area just to kind of make this cohesive and i kind of like that so it's kind of creating depth in the picture just by adding these like little highlights here and there and you do the same thing if you're working like regular charcoal and but there you're adding shadows so you're adding extra shadows to kind of like create a little more depth and along this i feel like i can tighten this up a little bit so that it doesn't look so crazy loose And, you know, maybe you lose some of that ultra realism that we maybe uh, had going and stuff and it becomes like a looser picture, but I like it. I, th I think it, I think it looks kind of cool. Um, right above his mouth. I want to add a little bit of highlight up there as well. Just so that you do kind of. As your as your eyes are kind of roaming around the picture, you kind of catch this little highlight here, and you're like, "Oh, cool! He's got a little snarl to it, or smirk." Yeah, this is this is the uh, doggo equivalent of the Mona Lisa smirk. Um, so through here, there were these. Uh, like I said, there was these like little. Um, I'm gonna call them dog freckles, but. <laughs> They're really like where the uh, whiskers meet the uh, mouth. Um, basically, these like little 
circles since I know that this blending tool, oh, it's not lifting them like I want to. So let me make a really fine point on this eraser. And then I'll just kind of come in, lift up some of that stuff, create these like little circles where the whiskers come out. This is just little extra details, right? So like, it really doesn't matter in the greater scheme of things. I think that most people, when they look at this picture, they'll see what you intended them to see. It looks like a dog. Looks good enough. Um, they're happy with it. But when it comes to like these little extra fine details and stuff, it really helps sell the picture. Now I kind of went a little overboard on this one. So let me round that off a little bit. But this is, this is how you create these like little visual features that people enjoy, you know? Exactly, exactly because I can. So kid in here mentioned that their dog got into a little scruff with a uh, Siberian Husky. I didn't know that beforehand, but I kind of psychically channeled that entire thing. And this dog is apologizing to a uh, kid's dog. That's the story I'm going with on this particular dog. That's the story of this picture. Thanks, Lorraine. I appreciate it. I don't know if you sent me your address, but I do want to send that Forrest Finn picture out to you because you're the one who wanted, who said you wanted it and, um, you know, it's just sitting around not doing anything. Hey, thanks, Nomadic uh, Madman. I appreciate it. I love that name, by the way, Nomadic Madman. You're the Van Gogh of nomadics. Kind of tighten that up a little bit. All right, I think I'm going to call this done. Um, how are we doing on time? Yeah, so it's around the two hour mark anyway, uh, which is where these things usually go. Um, I feel like that's that's a good amount of time. I want to put in a few more marks down through here but also i don't want to overwork it um there's the i can continue putting in more things but then that's um that runs the risk of screwing something up and you know it just kind of feels overworked it is meant to be a sketch it's not meant to be a photo so like even if you did put in like a ton of details and stuff it's still going to be a sketch so i kind of want to like get out while it's still good you know before i like Screw it up. So, yeah, I think I'm going to call this done here in one second. I want to tinker with it just a little bit. Sometimes, like in the final touches, I, I want to come back. So I just put in like a bunch of marks up here before, but I kind of want to cap the tip of it with uh, you know, like these wider marks and stuff. And that kind of like cleans it up. Like down here, it's still kind of washed out. I don't know. I could still do more with it. Through here, it just looks like a bunch of lines. I could probably tinker with that. Right through here, this is a perfect spot. So right through here, it's kind of just washed out. I can just come in and put one extra mark, and guess what? That entire area becomes a feature of detail. Just one little mark, clean that up. And I know that that probably doesn't translate on camera, but in my mind, that one little mark just completely improved that entire area. So... Anyway, I am done with this. I, I'm going to stop tinkering with it. Uh, I'm going to sit back. Look at it, see if there's anything else I want to do with it. He's got a bit of a long snout, doesn't he? I don't know. I, I think the proportions are good. Like, maybe the his right eye on the other side could have been, like, a little bit lower. But no. I mean, I can over-criticize it. I think it's fine. So, um, hey, some new people in here. Hey, okay, Larry. Well, you were in here earlier. Uh, hey, Pirate. How's it going? All right. So I am going to call this done. Um, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me on this uh, on this Friday night. Uh, I hope you guys have a really great weekend. Um, I may get bored and draw another picture tomorrow. So uh, be looking for a short. Um, I appreciate that, Pirate. Thank you. Um, but... Yeah, so uh, I think we'll call it a night. I uh, hope you guys have a good weekend. Um, it's still pretty early even on the East Coast, so, uh, you know, maybe you guys can go out there and have some fun. 
Um, I will take a, a like a still shot of this and post it up on the uh, tab if you want to check it out later. The uh, community tab if you guys want to check it out later. And I'll probably uh, create a time lapse out of this and post it up as a short. So be looking for that. Um, be sure to give those a, a thumbs up because, like, I have known that uh, I have seen that the shorts um, get some views, and uh, the more thumbs up it gets, the more views it gets. So the likes on that definitely, you know, correspond to however many people will end up getting to see it. Um, like, more people get to see it, the more likes it gets. I don't know, YouTube. What can I say? Um, but I'll probably, I, I'm, I'm really enjoying doing these live streams, so I'll probably be back Monday. Um, I don't know what I'm going to draw, maybe another pet, maybe, uh, maybe I'll do like, um, I don't know. I don't want to spoil it. I, I have, I have some thoughts. Um, I love the idea that came up in here tonight about using, uh, uh, street chalk or like, yeah, street chalk to, uh, do a mural, um, as, uh, as it gets warmer, be expecting that because I, I cannot resist creating temporary graffiti. graffiti. It's, it's just matches my my personality when it comes to art. Temporary art, um, just for the sake of confusing people as they walk down a path, that's totally in my wheelhouse. I, I am definitely going to do that. But anyway, I won't keep you guys. Have a great weekend. Uh, hopefully it's warm where you guys are and you get to go out and enjoy the sunshine. But until then, I'll catch you guys later. Have a good one.